Hello and welcome to my class. In this video, I am going to discuss the salient features and examples of order Coleoptera or the order of beetles. Order Coleoptera is the most diverse group of insects on earth. There are about 400,000 reported species of beetles and according to this paper published in PNS in 2015, there are about 1.5 million species of beetles. So more than 1 million species are yet to be reported. It is so diverse that one in every four species of animals is a beetle. When the famous British evolutionary biologist J.B.S. Holden was asked if there were anything that could be concluded about God from the study of natural history, Holden joked, God must have an inordinate fondness for beetles. You must be thinking at this point that if beetles are so abundant, then why don't we see them more frequently? The reason is their concealed habit. They tend to hide from our eyes. But if you are observant, particularly to the ground, under the stones, under the debris, you will definitely see beetles. So now let's begin learning about order Coleoptera. The beetles come in many different colors. They can be very dull brown or black or they can be bright colored like red, green, etc. They can even have metallic colors. Sometimes they can have spots, speckles or stripes. Their integument is heavily chitinized or sclerotized. So they are very hard insects. Now let me tell you why they get the name order Coleoptera. They have hardened and modified protective forewings, which are also known as the elytra. So this sheath-like wings or coleos-like terra, that give them the name coleoptera. In some wavels and carabids, the hind wings are completely absent because these are not flying insects. They only have the elytra, which are immovably united. Now let's see how these hind wings are used for flying and the fore wings are used for protection. You can see this insect would stretch its fore wing and will use its hind wing for flying. You see here? Okay. Now let's talk about the head. Head is heavily sclerotized and appendages present several variations in shape and size. In wavels, the fronts and the vertex are extended in the front to form the rostrum, which bears the mouth parts and the antennae. The eyes are very well developed and in the cavernicolous and subterranean forms, eyes can be reduced or lost. But eyes show varied modifications being large and contiguous above and below as in males of lampyrids or as in gyrenus, where the eyes are divided into dorsal and ventral eyes. So, the dorsal eyes would help them in aerial vision and the ventral eyes will help them in underwater vision because gyrenus is an aquatic beetle. The eyes can be of many different types like acorn, eucorn or pseudocorn types. So, when the omatidia will lack the crystalline cone. That type of eye is known as the acorn type. When the crystalline cone is present in the omatidia, you would call that eucorn type. And when instead of a crystalline cone, there is just an invagination present, then you would call it a pseudocone type of eye. So all these types of eyes are found in different species of beetles. Antennae also exhibit a great variety. They can be of serrate, clavet, lamellate, moniliform, etc. Different types of antennae are found here. In my video on insect antennae, you will get descriptions and why each of these antennae are called with their particular names. Everything in that video, so please watch that video. Now let's talk about the mouth parts. The labrum is well developed, but it may be hidden behind or fused with clypeus like in weevils, like here. The mandibles reach three 
the mandibles reach their maximum development in the males of stag beetles. These beetles are known as stag beetles because their mandibles attain the structure like antlers of a stag. Now, these beetles will have, uh, can have the mandibles who are longer than the length of the body. Okay, they can have serrated edges and in the weevils, they are only accessory structures with an immovable lobe or prostheca. In cannabids, the mandibles are acute with sharp cutting edges or bluntly toothed as in most phytophagous forms. The maxillae are very well developed and the maxillary pulps are four segmented. Labium is made of a large mentum. The submentum is also well developed in some and fused with galia in others. Prementum is folded in the mentum. Labial pulpi are usually three segmented. Please remember that each mouth part can have very different modifications in species to species. I'm just giving you a generalized view of all these mouth parts. Let's talk about the thorax. The freely movable prothorax has a large pronotum made of a single sclerite. The reduced meso and metanotum are fused and their charga are clearly divisible into prescutellum, scutellum and postscutellum. Scutellum is a triangular sclerite present on the mesonotum or the dorsal targum of the thorax. Right? Now, the scutellum is a distinguishing feature of other hemiptera. But in many beetles, you also get to see this scutellum. Like here you don't see it clearly, but here you do. The legs undergo a variety of modifications representing adaptations for different functions like solitary or jumping, fossorial or digging, natatorial or uh, swimming. But in most species, legs are modified for walking or running. The tarsi are five segmented. Here you can see the tarsa. And in many beetles, but rarely fourth and fifth segments are fused. I have already given you a description of the forewing or the elytra. But according to the venation of the hind wing, the hind wing can further be divided into three types. The adiphagid type, the staphylinid type and the cantharid type. In the adiphagid type, all the veins and cross veins are well developed. You can see the regular veins as well as the cross veins. But in staphylinid type, the cross veins are absent. You see only the regular veins. You do not see any cross veins here. And in cantharid type, uh, the median and the cubitus veins often coalesce distally or join distally to form a definite loop. Here you get to see the loop. So this is the cantharid type of wing. So we have three types of wing, adiphagid, staphylinid and cantharid. Let's talk about the abdomen. Some of the proximal segments are not very clearly visible. The sternum of the first and third segments are reduced and the targum of the first segment is membranous. Eight targites and five to seven sternites are distinctly visible. According to the nature of the sternites, there are four different types of abdomen. Adiphagate, haplogastrus, symphiogastrus, hologastrus. In adiphagate type, the hind coxa are immovably fused with the metathorax and completely divide the first visible abdominal sternite which is more or less fused with the next two. In haplogastrus type, the second abdominal segment exhibits a pleurite and a small lateral plate that represent the sternite. So they do not have the real sternite, but the abdominal segment exhibits a pleurite, that is the lateral sclerite, and a small lateral plate which represent the sternite. In symphogastrous type, the pleurites of the second segment are fused with that of the third segment and the second sternite is membranous and not visible externally. Okay, So, here is a second sternite but it is 
uh, trans it is membranous and not visible externally. In the hologastrous type, the second sternite is fully sclerotized and distinct from the third segment. The ninth and tenth abdominal segments are associated with the genitalia. Let's talk about the stridulatory organs. Stridulation is very common in orthoptera. It is also found in hemiptera and it is also quite common in beetles. There are certain types of beetles who can make sound either by rubbing one surface to other or they can even make hissing sound by blowing air. Now, the stridulatory organs can either be present in their head or in mandibles or it can be present as ridges on the femur which rubs against the edges of the elytra. In leucanids, a series of ridges are present on the mid coxa, that is coxa of the mid leg, the hind legs containing the rasping organs. So, the mid and the hind legs will be rubbed against each other. In some cerambicids, the sound is produced by rubbing the hind femur with the elytra. Now, let's talk about the internal anatomy. You have already seen that there is a huge diversity present in their external anatomy and it is equally represented in their internal anatomy. Let's talk about their digestive system first. Most beetles are adapted to herbivorous diet. The elementary canal basically consists of a short narrow pharynx, the esophagus, the crop and the gizzard. Gizzard is usually lined by sclerotized ridges or folds or with spines or denticles. The gizzard is also known as the proventriculus. Crop may or may not be present depending on the species. The midgut is very variable in form and is often of complex nature. Multiple cica are also present. Cica, gastric cica or the hepatic cica are present at the proximal part of the midgut, right? So, in cases of beetles, there are multiple cica which are packed at the uh, uh, proximal part of the midgut. The hindgut may be of varied lengths. There are typically four to six malpigian tubules and this is of importance because it can divide one family from another. Okay. All right. Now, the nervous system in beetles contains all the types found in insects. In insects, you would find the cerebral ganglia. Then each thoracic segment in the typical cases would have one pair of ganglia. And then there would be seven or eight abdominal ganglia present in the abdominal segments. Now, this form is also found in um beetles as well as like in flies the thoracic and abdominal ganglia all fuse together to form a composite structure that type of nervous system is also find, found in serica brunea or amphimelon solistitialis okay so like in cockroach you must have studied the nervous system where you have seen that there are three thoracic ganglia and seven or eight abdominal ganglia. That kind is also present here. And like flies, the composite structure formed by the fusion of thoracic and abdominal ganglia are also found in beetles. Okay. The circulatory system consists of the heart. Heart is divided into a variable number of chambers and is continued at the as the aorta through the thorax into the head where it becomes branched at the apex. The respiratory system which is made with the trachea, the tracheal system attains its highest degree of differentiation among the actively flying members of scarabido, scarabioidea. Usually 10 pairs of spiracles are present. The first is situated between pro and mesothoracic segments and the rest are present on metathoracic and abdominal segments. The eight abdominal pairs of spiracles are either vestigial or non-functional in many beetles. Let's talk about the reproductive system. In males, the reproductive system will be made of testis, vasa differentia and one or more pairs of accessory glands and a median ejaculatory duct. 
The testes can come in varied forms depending on the species. It can be simple and tubular like in suborder Adifaga, but in some others, testes are compound and divided into a number of separate follicles. The latter may be present in a rounded capsule and can communicate with the vas deferens by means of separate ducts. In subordered polyphaga, testicular follicles may be composed of aggregations of small rounded or oval sessile ducts, which open directly into vas deferens. So here they form separate ducts and here these rounded and oval sessile sacs open directly in the vas deferens. Accessory glands show many differences with regards to their position, number and their origin. In females, the ovarioles can be of polytrophic type like in suborder adifaga or it can be acrotrophic type like in polyphaga. So polytrophic type is where the nerve cells are present along the ovarioles and they supply the nourishment. And in acrotrophic type, the nerve cells are not present along the ovarioles, but nourishment is provided from the distal part of the ovariole. Ovarioles may vary greatly in number from species to species. For storing the sperm achieved after copulation, there is a spermatheca which uh, opens by a narrow long duct into the vagina or bursa copulatrix. Bursa capillatrix is a diverticulum on the wall of the vagina and spermatozoa is received here first and then from the bursa capillatrix it is passed on to the spermatheca. Let's talk about the metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is complete in beetles. You would see egg, larvae, pupae and adults in their life cycle. The larvae can come in many different forms depending on the species. There is carabiform type of larva, which is seen here. There is campodiform larva, which is here. And then there is caterpillar-like erusiform larva. Erusiform larva can also be uh, with legs or without legs. Okay. The pupa is adecticus and exarate type. Adecticus means that it would have non-functional mandibles. An exarate type would mean that their appendages are not glued to the body. Now let's talk about the classification of order Coleoptera. Order Coleoptera is divided into four suborders. Suborder Edifaga, suborder Arcostimata, suborder Mixophaga and suborder Polyphaga. These three suborders are easy to remember because suborder Edifaga has just one superfamily, Caraboidea. Suborder Archistomata, Arcostimata does not have any superfamily. It just has three, sorry, two families, family Cupididae and family Micromalthidae. Suborder Mixophaga has one superfamily, Spherioidea, and four families under this. But suborder Polyphaga is a very diverse order. Majority of beetles are included under this suborder and they are further classified into 20 superfamilies. Now, I do not want you to remember all the names of the 20 superfamilies. If you can, that would be fantastic, but I do not expect all of you to remember all this. However, there are some which are of more importance to us than the others. So I would suggest that you remember at least these superfamilies. So superfamily Scarabioidea has 13 families and there are some families which are more uh, prominent. One is family Lucanidae which includes the stag beetles where the mandibles form antler-like uh, antler structures as in stags. Then we have family Scarabidae where we see the dung beetles. For example, Helicopris bucephalus, which is an elephant dung beetle. This is not an elephant dung beetle. This is just a regular dung beetle. Then we have family Melolonthidae, where we find the cockchafers and the June beetles. Then we have family Dynastidae, where we see the rhinoceros beetles. You see why they get the name rhinoceros? Then we have superfamily Illateroidea, 
where we have the family Elateridae, which includes the click beetles. They make the clicking sound by rubbing their legs against their uh, elytra. And then we have family Lampyridae. Lampyridae includes the glowworms and the fireflies. This is Luciola lateralis. This is found in Thailand. Superfamily Darmestoidea includes four families, including one which is Darmestidae. Darmestidae has, uh, I mean, includes one very important uh, pest of stored grains, Trogoderma granaria. Then we have superfamily Bostricoidea, which includes again four families, and one of them is Bostricidae. Under family Bostricidae is uh, the lesser grain grower or the Rhizopartha dominica. Here you don't get to see the head because the head is hidden behind the prothorax. Then we have superfamily Cucujoidea, where we have some very important families like family Coccinellidae and family Tenebrionidae. Family Coccinellidae includes the ladybird beetle or ladybug beetle, the Coccinella, and Epilacna viginti octopunctata, which is a pest of vegetables, also known as the Hadda beetle. Hadda beetle looks very similar to Coccinella, but it would be yellowish in color and there are difference in the patterns of their spots. Then under family Tenebrionidae, we have Tribolium castaneum or red flower beetle, which is found in flower as well as products made with flower. Then we have superfamily Chrysomeloidea, which includes at least uh, two important families, family Brushidae, which includes Callosobrucus maculatus, a common pest of pulses, and family Hispidae, which includes Dicladispa armigera or Rhysispa. You see the spines on this beetle? This is very distinctive of Rhysispa. Then we have superfamily Curculionoidea, which includes the family Curculionidae. And the weevils belong to this superfamily. Cytophyllus oryzae is a rice weevil, which is a pest of stored rice. So, with those examples, let me elaborate the economic importance of beetles. There are many species of order Coleoptera which are very important pests because they damage our economic growth by spoiling the crops, spoiling our plants and spoiling the trees then some can have toxic secretions that can be very harmful to either us or to domesticated animals. And uh, for example, blister beetles can be very harmful to horses if they feed on the, uh, while feeding on hay, if they uh, feed on the blister beetles. Then ladybird beetles, these are also very important because they, their larvae help by feeding on aphids. Okay, so this is economically important one and these two are not so much. Some metals mostly in the larval state are used as food in some cultures. So all you need to remember for economic importance of beetles is number one, they are very diverse. Many of them can be pests of fresh crops, trees, roots, etc. or they can be pests of stored grains. Then we have some economically important species like ladybird beetle, which can, <coughs> which can feed on aphids and that way can save our plants. So with that note, I am going to end this video. Hope you like this video. Please come back for my next video on order diptera. Thank you.